months. Now, police are going to speak for the first time about the mysterious case of a man missing for eight years. Rudy Ferris was 18 at the time of his disappearance, and a good Samaritan found the now 26-year-old unresponsive outside of a church just days ago. Nima Romani, a friend of the show, is a former federal prosecutor and joins us live now to discuss more on this very bizarre case. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to be here. Well, thanks for having me, Josh. So just in your legal experience here and everything that you have seen, and of course you've seen a lot, what are your initial thoughts when you hear the details of this case that have kind of come out? Yeah, Josh, this is a very unique case. Nothing I've seen in my 20 years of practice. So if the allegations are true and Rudy's mom was sexually abusing him, giving him hallucinogenic drugs, I mean, that's a problem. It's a crime, especially when you're dealing with someone who's a, maybe a dependent adult. And speaking from a legal perspective here, Rudy was 18 when he went missing, so he was legally considered to be an adult. Does that change anything about let's say, how the case is investigated versus if he had been even one year younger and considered to be a legal child? Well, normally an individual, once they turn 18, they're an adult and they're responsible for their own actions, whether it's drug use or sexual conduct. But in this particular case, Rudy appears to be nonverbal. And if he has special needs, he would fall under that dependent adult category. And another adult, including his mother, could be held liable for those types of actions. It's no different than an elder abuse case. You can abuse someone who's a dependent adult. And do you anticipate that we could potentially see charges? We know that there are the allegations now against his mother. Uh, I mean, Rudy, it seems, would not be charged in any way, but could his mother actually face charges here? I think that's a possibility. Rudy, of course, wouldn't face charges because he's the victim in the case. But whenever you're dealing with someone who's allegedly making a false police report, someone who is taking advantage of someone sexually who really isn't in a position to consent, again, these are just allegations, of course, um, that's a problem. So Rudy would be treated just like any other child or an individual who is unable to make decisions for himself. And those type of abuse allegations could result in criminal charges. And as I mentioned, this news conference is set to get underway really any moment now. Are there any questions that you hope the department is going to answer here? Because this is going to be the first time that they are addressing the public, addressing the media after Rudy himself was found after eight years. Josh, I'd like to hear what the department says about these allegations involving drug abuse, sexual abuse. And I'd also like the department to comment on what the mother's story has been, I mean, she's given very conflicting accounts of what happened. Of course, the initial report of a kidnapping, uh, Rudy allegedly being taken to Mexico, returned a few short days later. Her story doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'd like to hear what it is. Are you surprised that she's been talking to the media? She's spoken to news stations there and made some comments about what she believes happened to him or what she says happened to him. Is that surprising as someone who is now being accused of uh, some pretty disturbing crimes? You know, her lawyer, if she has a lawyer, would advise her not to comment because those statements can only be used against you. They can hurt you in any criminal prosecution, of course. We know that people often don't follow their lawyer's advice, and that's maybe what is happening here. She either doesn't have a lawyer or is ignoring what her lawyer is telling her. What information do you think we are not going to find out today? Because there's only so much that police release when there is this active investigation. Is there anything specifically that you think we're not going to be able to learn now or may not learn for a while? I think we're not going to learn really what's happened these past several years. We know that there's allegations that Rudy's mom scared him, said the police are going to come get you. And I don't think we're going to get too far into the sexual abuse allegations. We may just cover them at a surface level. Again, we're talking about a, an alleged victim of a sex crime. So I think those types of details will be discussed in generalities, if at all. Of course, yeah, and there are so many questions here. And you, you already kind of spoke on this, but in your experience, have you ever seen a case like this one? You said, of course, that it's different. The details are so disturbing, and you're talking about somebody who was missing for eight years. That is a long time. 
you know, I have seen this type of abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse of dependent adults. And unfortunately, that is not uncommon. What I haven't seen is this interesting kidnapping layer on top of it. Oftentimes, people will follow false police reports when someone's been murdered or someone's been missing. But to make a report like this and then to have the individual live in your house and apparently interact with the neighbors, I mean, it's really bizarre. And the fact that mom is saying that maybe the individual that the neighbors were interacting with was not Rudy, but her nephew, just very sort of strange type comments. And um, I think it's going to be interesting to see who's telling the truth. And ultimately, it may come to a jury to make that decision. And one interesting fact is that we know that he was apparently found unresponsive. I believe it was outside of a church when a good Samaritan happened to be walking by there. Your thoughts on that situation and the fact that after all these years, if he was being held, let's say, captive or something of that nature, to be found kind of unresponsive outside of a church out there in the open for people is kind of a, an interesting tidbit, I guess. It is. And I don't know if he was trying to escape, and I don't know if he's nonverbal because he was special needs. And again, uh, there's been a lot of rumor and innuendo in a case like this, but if you believe what some of the neighbors are saying, that he was sort of coerced to stay because he had this fear of law enforcement, it wouldn't be surprising that he would have that reaction if he were out in the public and he, would, he was contacted by a member of the public or a police officer. What do you feel about the flow of information, the fact that now we're talking days have passed here and Houston police are just making these initial comments about the case? What do you think about that overall? Well, generally, I like law enforcement to be open. I think they have a duty to the public, especially in a case like this that's drawn so much attention. And, you know, we are talking about individuals that are most deserving of society's protection, people that can't take care of themselves, people that are maybe special needs. And again, what we don't know, but if truly Rudy is unable to take care of himself because of some issue, whether it's autism or some other, uh, something else that renders him special needs, I would like the police department to explain what they've done to protect him and others that are similarly situated. Do you think there is a reason that they've waited so long to make a public statement? Do you think it could be because just the national media exposure the case has has received at this point? Or could they possibly be still trying to piece everything together and they don't want to release something that they're not sure of just yet? I think that's probably right. They want to do a thorough investigation. And here you may have a victim who, because of fear or for other reasons, isn't fully cooperating. And then you have a mother who's obviously given very different accounts of what happened. So um, I think it's going to be tough for them to parse through all that. All right, Nima, thank you so much. We are going to go to that news conference now that is underway over in Houston. We appreciate you joining us, Nima. Thanks, Josh. Good afternoon, everyone.